Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Justin. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I have something pretty cool planned. This is something a little bit different for my channel. I'm going to be taste testing different cheeses, different shredded cheeses, mozzarella cheeses, um, in the hopes of finding a duplicate for the Trader Joe's light shredded mozzarella. So in case you have absolutely no idea what I am talking about, um, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little backstory. So my number one favorite meal to have on Weight Watchers is the pizza that I make. I make this really cool pizza. It's a pepperoni and hamburger pizza. I'll go ahead and insert like a clip of what it looks like. And it's just bomb. It's so bomb. It's only eight smart points versus like, I think you could go to Domino's and just one slice of pizza is. I just looked it up for one slice of a pepperoni pizza from Domino's, it's 10 smart points. So my entire pizza is eight. So anyway, it's my absolute favorite meal to have on Weight Watchers. And a few months ago, I found out the most heart-wrenching news. And that is that one of, well, pretty much the main ingredient of that pizza, which is the cheese. The Trader Joe's light shredded mozzarella cheese has been temporarily kind of discontinued. So this was a really, really sad time for me, as well as the rest of the Weight Watchers community, as well as like just everybody who loves the cheese, which is a lot of people. So anywho, basically what had happened was, from what I've seen online, I guess the nutrition information was incorrect. And so um, I don't know what exactly was incorrect, but I'm assuming it was more calories than what they had said or more fat like i don't know but people have been alluding to the fact that it was not accurate so with that being said because the nutrition facts were not accurate that means that the smart point value was also not accurate so i don't know if someone like called him out on it or how it came about but basically trader joe's has taken all of it off the shelves it is no more, you cannot get it as of right now, which really sucks because I, I don't even have a Trader Joe's here where I currently live in Louisiana, but I do make frequent trips to Dallas because I will be moving there shortly um, in case you guys didn't know. But the last trip I made to Dallas, I was like one week late. I missed it by one week. And um, for me, since I don't have a Trader Joe's here, whenever I first went to Trader Joe's, I bought like five or six bags of cheese and I stocked up and then I kept it in my freezer. But of course this happens when I'm on my last bag. I'm on my last bag of cheese and there's nothing I can do, I can't get any more. So like I said, people online have been saying it's the nutrition facts and stuff. Um, I actually went to the Trader Joe's, I went to several locations to see if they still had it, you know, I had a little bit of faith, but they didn't have it and I did ask one of the workers and she said that it was a production delay. So I guess that's what they're calling it. But anywho, like I did say, this is supposedly temporary. They said that the cheese will be back on shelves next year in 2020. They didn't give a specific date, so I don't know if this is gonna be like January 2020 or just whenever they feel like it, 2020. So whenever all this was happening, I went on a whole rant and spill on my Instagram because I was just, I was ticked. I'm like, you mean to tell me the one meal I love, my favorite is meal, I can't have it no more because y'all decide y'all don't want y'all cheese to be accurate. Like the disrespect. So I was going on a whole rant. I was just mad. And um, at the time, I did not know of any dupes, any other cheeses that I thought would work. And I said that on my story. And shockingly, I had, oh my gosh, so many people sending me like suggestions. And by the next day, my inbox was so full because people were like, girl, have you tried this, 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 X, Y, Z? So long story short, that is kind of what has brought me to this video today. Um, I've been telling people like, oh yeah, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna try this. But honestly, like this happened maybe a month and a half, two months ago. I haven't even made pizza since then. I think I've been like low key just in a funk because I feel like I got one bag of Trader Joe's cheese left to make it through like the rest of the year or until whenever they decide to restock it. So I haven't even made pizza, but I have been listening to a lot of y'all's comments and suggestions. And now I am going to finally put it all to the test and I am going to, I decided I wanted to try them all at one time because it takes a lot to make the pizza, you know, like, cause I hand make it, I have to make the dough, do, it just takes a lot. 
Um, so I was like, if I'm gonna do this, I'd rather test them all out at one time. And I was like, what better way than to make a YouTube video for it? So that is what I'm gonna be doing. I'm about to show you guys all the cheeses that I have. I have four different kinds that I'm gonna try. Um, and then I am going to use my Trader Joe's kind to act as like the control. Is that what they call that in the uh, experiment? Just so I know like what I, it's supposed to taste like, I'm gonna use my Trader Joe's. So anyway, that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, I'm sorry this intro is very, very long, but I had to kind of bring you guys up to speed so that you would know what this is and why I'm doing this in the first place. I think I covered everything. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. Alrighty guys, so here are my contenders. We have the four choices right here. And then this is the Trader Joe's Light Shredded Mozzarella. It looks like this because it's actually like frozen. I just took it out of the freezer. But um, this is what it looks like. This is the good old bag of cheese that's been causing all of this ruckus. And then of course the rest of them that you guys have recommended. So I'm gonna just give like a little brief overview of each one so you guys know like the basis of what we're doing. So I just wanna let you guys know that I am basing this experiment or taste test off of what I would normally do for a pizza. So for my pizza, I normally use three ounces of cheese. And so that's what I'm gonna be calculating for all of these as if I was using these for an actual pizza that I was gonna make. So for the Trader Joe's Light Shredded Mozzarella, three ounces of cheese is three smart points. So basically one point per ounce. Then the number one requested cheese that I was sent over and over and over and over is the Velveeta Shreds Mozzarella. This has by far been the most popular dupe for it. This has been the most suggested um, thing. I honestly, I didn't even know Velveeta had cheese like this cause I thought Velveeta was just like the Rotel kind of cheese. So I did calculate the points and it's very interesting. This is the worst in points out of all of these. So I was kind of shocked that <laughs> so many people liked this, but um, yes, for three ounces of this, it is six smart points so it's literally double what this is whenever i scan this into the ww app um i did have to convert it from cups to ounces but i know my math so don't try to come for me it is six smart points for three ounces so that's already honestly kind of a strike for me because i'm really not trying to spend six points on cheese alone but apparently a lot of people like it so we'll see Moving on, we have the Kraft Fat-Free Mozzarella Cheese. Now this right here, me and this one actually have a little bit of history. When I first tried the pizza for the first time, I tried it with the Fat-Free Mozzarella and it came out terrible. Came out super bad, so bad to the point where I just assumed I didn't like the pizza at all. It wasn't until I ditched this and I tried the Trader Joe's cheese that I was like, oh, the pizza is actually good. I just needed to change the cheese. And so I know you're wondering, girl, if you don't like the cheese, why are you gonna try it again? Well, it's because whenever I made the pizza with the cheese, my um, beginner chef self, I, I made a really stupid mistake. Long story short, I didn't know that whenever you have something in the oven, um, one of the like burners has is like hot because I think it's like heat has to escape or gas is escaping. I don't know, somebody explained it to me, but basically what had happened was I made my two ingredient dough, rolled it all out, everything was good. I put it on the pan and then I like went and chilled and like watched a movie or was on my phone for an hour. Like I did something and I put the pan on the stove top. Now the stove top wasn't on, so I didn't think there was no problem with that. But I think I was meal prepping and I had something in the oven and because of that, the dough thing was cooking the entire time. So long story short, by the time I actually went to make the pizza, the dough was already cooked and I was like, girl, I didn't even know stoves did that. And I'm really glad that somebody told me that because I was definitely about to call my leasing office and be like, bro, something wrong with my stove. Anywho, long story short, I figured since I also messed up with the dough, I would give this a second shot to see if maybe it'll work. Also, I wanted to give it a second shot because this is the best in points. So for three ounces, it is only one smart point, which I was kind of shook because I'm like, really, that's it, just one smart point? But um, I guess it's because it's fat free. So, so yeah, I'm excited to kind of give it a second chance. I kind of hope it redeems itself because that would actually um, be better for me in points versus the Trader Joe's, but we will see. So let's do this one next. So I know y'all are thinking, girl, why you got string cheese over here? 
but several people actually um, recommended me to try string cheese mozzarella and then grate it up myself. So I don't really know how this is gonna go, but I thought it was kind of an ingenious idea. So this string cheese is actually from Trader Joe's. It is their light mozzarella string cheese. And one stick is one ounce. And so for three sticks, it would be three ounces. And for three ounces, it is five smart points. So it's honestly not the best in points. It's kind of close to the Velveeta over here being six points. So I don't really know how this is gonna go, but I thought it was worth a try to see if, you know, I like it. And last but not least, we have this brand right here so no one really recommended me this but i did see it in walmart i was kind of like scanning all of the cheeses just to see which one was like the best as far as points and this one is similar to the trader joe's one but it goes down by one point so this is the same one stick is one ounce um but for three sticks it is four smart points instead of five so i thought that was pretty good so i have a nice little range here um this being the lowest one smart point three smart points four five and six so that's how it is on points um but i guess what is most important is how they taste so without further ado let's go ahead and i'm going to be putting these to the test all right guys so i was not sure if i wanted whenever i was planning for this video i was kind of conflicted because i was like should i do five individual like personal pan pizzas or should I do one big giant pizza and like kind of, um, I wouldn't combine all the cheeses obviously, but I would do one big pizza and like cut it into five slices and each slice be a different cheese. I hope that makes sense. But I honestly, I was going back and forth so much cause I could see like pros and cons of both. But honestly, my deciding factor is that I was in Walmart and I was on the cooking aisle and I came across this bad boy right here look at this big old pizza pan so um my decision was honestly instantly made and we're making one big ass pizza so i'm super excited look how big anyway i'm getting carried away so let me explain how this is gonna go down i'm kind of like a math nerd like i i loved math in school so this is like my specialty what i'm about to be doing is i'm going to be taking what i would normally use for a pizza and I am going to be cutting that serving for the cheese in half. So I would normally, whenever I make my pizza with the Trader Joe's, I use three ounces of cheese. So for this pizza, I'm only gonna be using half of that, which is one and a half. So one and a half ounces of cheese times the five cheeses that I'm gonna be including in this little experiment is seven and a half ounces of cheese. And I know what y'all are thinking, Justin, that's too much cheese. You are correct. I am not gonna be eating this entire pizza. It is mainly for the purpose of taste testing. Um, and honestly, this isn't meant to be taken so seriously. So please, I don't really need the Weight Watcher police or the math police or the like healthy people police. Like this is supposed to be taken lightheartedly. So don't come for me. So with my cheese being seven and a half ounces of cheese, I was like, okay, so how big do I need to make my dough? and for it to be proportionally even um it is going to be a three-fourth cup portion of both self-rising flour and non-fat greek yogurt so if you have absolutely no idea what i'm talking about you should maybe watch how to make the pizza video to begin with if you don't know like what two ingredient dough and stuff is i will definitely link down the original video down below but basically the dough is two ingredient dough it's two ingredients you have non-fat um greek yogurt and you have self-rising flour and it's an equal mixture of both so normally whenever i do my pizza i do a third cup of both the flour and the yogurt but for this since this is going to be obviously a way bigger pizza i'm going to be using three-fourths cup of both ingredients so now that all of that is explained i really hope it's making sense and you're sticking with me so far let's finally get started on making this happen all right, so I got my little setup right here. I went ahead and put the stove on 400 degrees so I can go ahead and start preheating. But we're gonna go ahead and start making our dough. So for the flour, I use the gold medal brand self-rising flour. And then for the non-fat Greek yogurt, I use the Fae Total 0%. Like I said, if you want a more detailed um, instructional thing, then watch my original piece video. 
So I have my half cup measuring cup and my fourth cup measuring cup. One half plus one fourth equals three fourths. Goodness, I haven't done this in so long. Y'all see? One half, three fourths. All right, so one half and a fourth. So as y'all can see, I have my flour and my yogurt in here. I'm about to whip it all up. All right, I think this is as good as the consistency is gonna get. So now for flouring. Oh my gosh, this is so much dough. It's actually kneading very easily together. All right, so here's our dough ball. Look how freaking huge that is. So while rolling this out, I wanted to keep in mind uh, my thickness of the pizza I normally make. And this is about it. So it did tear just a little bit in the middle, but I'm just gonna take some of this extra and fill it up. And yeah, so now I have to figure out a way to transfer this big old thing to that pan with no room to do that. I did not think this through. All right, I'm gonna spray it just a tiny bit with some Pam. And let's try to finesse this. Oh, it's, it's so heavy, it's not like letting me. Okay, okay, okay. All right, that was kind of a fail, but it's transferred, that's all that matters. All right, you guys, this is the final product. This pan is actually like the perfect size for this pizza. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side and I guess I will start weighing out all of my cheeses. All right, so all of the shredded cheese should be fairly easy to measure. I just take them out the bag, put them on the scale and measure them. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the string cheese because I am going to have to grate this. So I did buy this little handheld grater. So we're about to see how this goes because I've never done this before. So I guess we can start with the Trader Joe's. All right, so I have some string cheese. I honestly have no idea how to go about this. I don't know if I should do it like this or like this. I don't know, let's go ahead and give it a try. That's doing nothing. Is that the right side? Oh no, it wasn't. Ooh, it's grating. Kind of. Very little amounts. Can y'all see? It's coming out very fine. Ooh, it's going to take a long time. Okay, that makes it come out easier. All right, I'm going to let y'all know automatically this gets several points taken off for how much extra work. This would have to be like my favorite out of all of them to voluntarily want to do this every single time. So there, can y'all see that? <laughs> it's very, very faint and fine. So we're off to a, a start. Okay, so if I do it like this in long strokes, it makes longer. Y'all can't even see. Let me try to do it like this like that, it makes it kind of longer. Y'all, I had to go get a chair. It was making my back hurt. All right, I think that's good enough. All right, here's a close up of what all I did, you can see. So just to actually test it out, I'm taking one of the actual cheeses and it is exactly one ounce, so that is correct. 
So now I am looking for it to be one and a half ounces. One point five. So this is one and a half ounces of the Trader Joe's light string mozzarella cheese. So I'm going to go ahead and put this to the side for now and begin on the um, the other brand. Fr Fr Frigo? I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Cheese heads. Starting on this. Alright guys, so really, really quick, I just discovered something. Um, I could tell just by the weight of this versus the Trader Joe's ones that I just did that these are a lot lighter and I was like is this one ounce um, and I just put it on the scale and it is 0.7 ounces so it is not a complete ounce and I did look back on the package and that was my fault um, I just assumed it was one ounce but they are not the entire bag is 10 ounces and it's a 12 pack bag so they are a little bit under one ounce per thing so that didn't really change anything as far as me because I'm still gonna do one and a half ounces for this video but it's probably gonna take an entire two cheese sticks if not I may have to go into a third one so just thought I'd mention that Alright guys, here is my cheese. After all of that, I will say that this one shredded a lot more easily. Um, it's actually a little like oddly satisfying just to see it like come out like this. So um, from an actual string cheese standpoint, if any of you guys actually like string cheese or if you have kids, um, I would definitely recommend this brand over the Trader Joe's because this one, it just did what string cheese does and it really kind of like came out very easily so I did go into a third one because when I was doing the math I'm like if each one is 0 0.7 then 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7 is 1.4 and we need 1.5 and I'm trying to make this fair oh maybe not well dang I didn't even need to do all that there one point. Oh, 1.5 okay all right guys, so the other one should be fairly easy. All I have to do is just measure them. So starting with the Velveeta, it actually smells good. Usually um, mozzarella cheese has a sour smell to it. 1.6, that's 1.5. Look how simple that was compared to the string cheese. Now for the Kraft fat free this has the sour smell to it so maybe it's just certain cheeses 1.5 and last but not least are trader joe's so i still have one baggie left before i go into that um bag that i have so if you don't know i go ahead and pre-portion my uh trader joe's light mozzarella and this one is my last baggie before i go into that bag that i showed you so i already put that bag back in the freezer because you know <laughs> your girl's trying to preserve it so i already know this is three ounces so half of this should be 1.5 that's 1.5 of the trader joe's and we are done with measuring Alrighty guys, so I kind of thought this was ratchet at first, but low key, I think it kind of looks cool. So I did label each one because I didn't want to like forget um, and I didn't want to keep the bags out because obviously the cheese needs to stay cold. So all of our lovely cheeses in a row, I'm going to go ahead and put them, well first I need to put the marinara sauce and then um, start putting all of these cheeses on there. Alright guys, so I normally never cook on this table or prepare food, but just because of like the scale of what I'm working with, I have a very, very tiny kitchen. And so I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna just go ahead and do it just like this. So I can see my dough is kind of like, it's ready to go in. It's like, girl, if you're gonna use me, use me. So I'm hoping I have enough marinara sauce. This is all the thawed marinara I have. Um, I do have another half of it, but it's frozen. So I'm really hoping this will be enough. Actually, you know what? Let me just make it easy. 
gosh. I honestly, I didn't even think of this. I really, really hope this is enough. Alright, I think this is as good and as even as it's gonna get. So, how am I going to split this up into five pieces? I kind of have an idea. If y'all watched my turkey chili meal prep video, I made like a star in the chili and meal prepped it like that. I kind of like just eyeballed it. So, I think I'm gonna like do something like that here. And uh, that may not work. <laughs> I just want to make sure like I clearly know one section. Alright, so there are our five little pizza quadrants. So I was trying to think of how I could differentiate which cheese was what um, with it going in the oven because obviously I can't put the signs in there with it in the oven. All right, so I got some toothpicks and here, I think I wanna make this one my top piece because it has kind of that, uh, but this one, uh, here, maybe I, because this is a lot of extra dough like on the side, maybe if I just stick this right here that'll help me know that this one is piece number one. So I don't know if you can see what I just did. I just stuck a toothpick in here indicating this one is piece number one. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw on this little sticky note a circle. I'm gonna mimic my little star. So I made a little pie shape with um, this little thing. And here is my pie shape here. And of course the top one is the one with the little toothpicks. So I'm gonna turn it like this and say that this is my little top one. So I'm gonna go in order of the ones that I shredded. So the first one would be the Trader Joe's string cheese. Next one would be the Frigo. I am going clockwise. Frigo and then the Velveeta. And then what was next? The craft. And then last but not least is our control group, the Trader Joe's Light Shredded. So this is gonna be my little map so that I know what I'm looking at. I know that the top one is going to be the one with that little thing. All right, so top one is the Trader Joe's String Cheese. And I'm gonna try my best to keep it like within its quadrant area. And if I feel like it's too much cheese, I, I won't use all of it because we'll see, but I don't want it to be too like overpowering. I don't think it's gonna have enough room. I have this much left. Um, so I'm gonna leave that alone and do the rest just to see how it kind of turns out. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to use all the cheese in any of them. I guess I, I probably should have not made the ratio completely equal because I didn't take into account these lines. I should have either done less cheese or more dough. So that's all of the Frigo cheese that I'm going to use. Next is the Velveeta shreds. Alright, so I only had a little bit of the Velveeta left. Then next is our craft fat free. You know, this looks a little small. Let me scoot it over just a bit. It looks a little bit better. And last but not least, my good old faithful Trader Joe's. And I'm gonna go and kind of bridge the gaps as much as I can. I am aware that it's likely that they will kind of bleed into each other, but I feel like as long as I have an idea, um, I probably won't even eat from like here, but I'll probably eat from like in this area of each one so that I know it's that cheese. All right guys, here is the final product of this 
project that I have done. Just to explain it one more time, here is my map and it is a complete identical of my pizza. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put this um, in the oven and I am going to keep a close eye on it because I do know that since this is a larger surface area, it may take a few minutes longer. It shouldn't be that long, but it may take just a little bit while longer for it to be fully cooked. Um, but we will see. I'm so excited to see how this turns out. And um, yeah. Oh my goodness. Ooh, the cheese has definitely reacted differently. So this is a close up of what it looks like. And you can see that is our starting point. So that's the Trader Joe's string cheese. Then the Frigo. The Frigo looks like it didn't even melt, honestly. It kind of just looks like it's still sitting there in the strands. Then we have the Velveeta shreds, which uh, I mean, uh, it kind of looks like it didn't really melt very well together either. It got toasty. Then our craft fat free mozzarella. Um, this blended or melted a little bit better than those two. Um, I mean, it looks okay. It doesn't look bad. Then we have our Trader Joe's light shredded. I'm actually very surprised it looks like this because I have never had it in the so many times I've made it I've never had it do this little burnt thing like I, I know what this is because I've seen it on like Pizza Hut and Domino's and stuff but I have never seen it come off on my pizza like that so that's kind of odd I don't know if that's because I left it in for an extra two minutes but Anyway, so I guess now I'm gonna go ahead and cut it up. Um, they retain their lines really well, so I can clearly see which one is which. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut them up and put them on separate plates, and then it will finally be time to taste test them. All right guys, so they've now been cut up and divvied out, and I use the same uh, sticky notes so that I can keep track of which one is which. So I'm about to finally go ahead and taste test these. I'm gonna go ahead and start with my control piece, which I already know I like. The Trader Joe's Light Shredded Mozzarella. That just made me so happy. Okay. I have to stop myself because I'll literally eat that entire thing. Now for the other ones. I'm scared. Um, I will say, as far as looks, the Trader Joe's string cheese looks the best as far as being blended and stuff. Like this looks like a real piece of pizza. Also, as far as looks, the Frigo looks the worst. It looks very stringy. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do this with my eyes closed. All right, I don't wanna drop anything. I wish I had someone here to do this for me, but I don't, so. Okay. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Bam. Bam. This one. Okay. Oh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Okay. Well, first of all, I feel like there's nothing on that tip. <laughs> I'm so nervous. This is awkward. It's not bad. It honestly kind of tastes the same. <laughs> Okay, which one was this? Ah, uh, Trader Joe's string cheese. That makes sense. Trader Joe's string cheese, I approve. And this one was, um, I can't remember. This one is five points in order for me to make my pizza. So I approve of this one. Um, I feel like I can only do this so many times. So, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. You are it. This one. I don't know why the tips kind of freak me out. Cheese is a little bit crunchier. I feel like from the texture, this is the, uh, the Frigo. So this is the Frigo. Honestly, I think when I close my eyes, none of them really taste bad. So we'll see in between these two because the craft fat free is the only one I'd already tried. So leftover, we've got the Velveeta, y'all's number one pick, and the craft fat free, which is the only other one besides that that I've already tried and I hate it. So 
Let's see how these go. Okay, I'm gonna just keep doing this until I can forget. I have such a tiny attention span, I already forgot. I'll do this one. This gets my Chewy Award. You gonna have to have the jaw of the life to chew this. I feel like this is the fat-free mozzarella because I remember it being very, very hard to chew. It's the fat-free mozzarella. So, um, I can say that I retried it and I did not like it. That sucks because it's the best in points. This is only one point for the entire pizza, but it's it's super, super chewy. It This does not blend very well together. It's just like, I don't know, like clog your arteries, just cheese sitting there for no reason. So this is my least favorite so far, which leaves the Velveeta the last of all. So I'll go ahead and taste test it. This one has a different, I don't know how to describe it. It definitely like has a melt in your mouth kind of texture to it. It has a different like taste to it. I'm thinking of like aged cheese, like cheese that's been aged and not in a bad way. Like it, it's just kind of different. Like, I don't know, it doesn't taste the Trader Joe's, Frigo and the, um, the other Trader Joe's all kind of taste similar but this has like a different taste to it. I can see why people like this. So in conclusion, I do not like the Kraft fat free. And it's not that I don't like the cheese because I use this cheese on my TV dinners. If you watch my grocery hauls or my what I eat in a day videos, I use this cheese on other stuff. I just don't like it on this pizza. It does not melt with itself very well. I love the Velveeta. It has a different taste. Um, the points though, it's three additional points. So if my pizza is eight points, then that would make it 11 points per pizza. I don't know if I'm willing to do that, but I can see why people like this. It has a different kind of taste. It's almost like something you have to try to know what I'm talking about. But I do approve of the Velveeta. For me, the, um, the Trader Joe's string cheese, this, probably is the most similar to the Trader Joe's light shredded, which would make sense because they're both Trader Joe's. But this one is a huge no for me as far as the labor. As much as I make this pizza, I am not about to sit there and grade the string cheese. It's just not, it's, uh, uh, uh. but it came out really good. So I guess the more work you put into it, like it blends very well. So, I mean, it, yeah, uh, I don't know. It depends if you're willing to do the work with it, but I'm not, so I probably won't make this again. And then the Frigo string cheese, um, this came out good. It doesn't look as appealing, but as far as how it tasted, it kind of tasted similar to both of them. So I don't really know which one I would go with because going off a of taste, I would go with the Trader Joe's string cheese or the Velveeta cheese. But in between the two, the string cheese is only five points, the Velveeta is six, but also the string cheese is a lot more work than the Velveeta. The Velveeta, you just take off the package and boom, it's done. But also the Frigo is kind of the same. I, I just don't see myself, even though the Frigo was easier to shred, I don't see myself pulling out a cheese grater every single time I wanna make pizza, like we not in Italy. I don't really know which one I would pick to go with because none of them compare like none of them are gonna be the Trader Joe's, which is just perfect. It was perfect in points, it was perfect in taste, and now it's no longer here, and whenever it comes back, it's probably not gonna be the same. So guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry, it's probably gonna be really long because I've been talking a lot, trying to explain everything and give you guys my honest opinion. But I'm really glad I decided to do this. It actually turned out very well. And instead of me having to make four different pizzas, like individually, I was able to do all of this at one time and I could already rule out what worked, what didn't work, like stuff like that. So I'm, I'm really happy with how this turned out and I'm kind of a little bit proud of myself. So um, yeah, if you do enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. 
And as always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Join me on this journey, and I will catch you in my next video. Bye, guys.